This is the second time in the YouTube channel's history where I'm making some sort of a thumbnail that has this format. The Detroit Red Wings. This is it. If anybody has any extra comments they want to make on the thumbnail, then hey, feel free to let me know because I very much am proud of being able to contrive this one for y'all. If anybody knows where it's from too, then hey, flex some of your knowledge in the comments there. But in this video, we're going over a very straightforward topic. The Detroit Red Wings, they're in it to win it, baby. And yesterday, in what was essentially one of the most playoff atmosphere-like games against the New York Islanders, you saw Motown take the dub. And not only on the score sheet, not only in terms of the standings and the points and the Islanders not getting any points. Red Wings won in regulation, by the way, very good on that but we got some big dubs elsewhere. Firstly, Captain Dylan Larkin, back in the lineup, baby. What do you say about that? Secondly, not only do we get multiple goals out of Dylan Larkin, but we had multiple points out of some of the wings that we want this team to be carried by the most. Andrew Kopp had a multi-goal game. Hey, is that not one of these players that we want to see round out the middle six scoring threats of this Red Wings team? You can't just rely on your superstars only, right? So with the Raymonds and the Larkins going out there doing their thing, getting that scoring from throughout the middle of your lineup is very important. Andrew Kopp, good on him, showing off his value. Christian Fisher, same thing. And man, oh man, did we see ourselves a game out of Patrick Kane and Alex Debrinkit. Debrinkit had multiple assists in this one. Sure, it's not the 5v5 goal production like we had called him out for in the last video, but it's good. It's him and the rest of this Wings team, Patty Kane, finding themselves on odd man rushes and being able to convert. This team played with a fiery intensity and a grit that we have not seen in the past nine games or so. Dylan Larkin and his absence pulled this team away from kind of playing like they actually wanted to win hockey games. But now to these back... Hey, you talk about coach bumps? That's a possibility, right? How about captain bumps? When your captain comes back and he puts his stamp on the team saying, yeah, this is my locker room, guys. This is our squad. This is the biggest game of the year. The most important two, four points that are potentially up here on the line. And we need to take this dub. And they did. They defeated the New York Islanders 6-3 to three in regulation, securing themselves in that wildcard spot. For now, at least. Because at the time of recording this audio, the Red Wings have 78 points in 70 games played. The Capitals have 75 points in 68 games played. The Islanders have 73 points in 69 games played. And they have lost three in a row. So, yeah, the Islanders are kind of tanking right now. I don't really think that's a good thing. But other than that, this ultimately was what we needed to see out of the Detroit Red Wings. Because as that gap increases between the Wings and the Islanders, it really only becomes the Washington Capitals that looks to be a real threat for that final wild card. They've got two games in hand. If they win those two games, they could overtake the Red Wings. But at the same time, I mean, the Caps have been losing a few here and there. Their goal differential is one of the worst in the NHL, which is mind-boggling to acknowledge considering that they're so close to the gosh darn playoffs. But hey, you know, I'll say it. I get it. I understand what's going on in Washington. Most of these Caps fans, especially the ones that I'm running into on social media, they don't really care about the playoffs. They don't care about making the dance or going up against whatever, like, I don't know, Boston Bruins or New York Rangers team that's going to be first in the East. They don't care about that. They just want to see Ovechkin get the goal record. So games like the one the other night against Toronto where Ovi gets two goals and the Caps are losing regulation, it's like, okay, great. We don't really care about the playoffs. We won in 2018. Ovi's goal record now, that's the most important thing. So how crazy would it be if the Detroit Red Wings were to somehow fall out of the postseason and lose that final wildcard spot to a team in Washington that probably a lot of fans don't even really care about seeing in the postseason? Like, what, you're excited to see Dylan Strom go out there and pass up prime scoring opportunities in front of the net point blank to toss it to Ovi who's open on the side? Ovechkin takes the All-Star game off every single year to rest. Do you think that guy cares more about another deep playoff run or does he care about the Gretzky record? 
We all kind of know where things are going with that, but with the Detroit Red Wings, they care about the postseason now. It's why the Iser plan went down this path of acquiring these middle-aged, middle of the lineup kind of guys, the cops, the comfers, the charats, the halls, the petries. These are not guys to help out the team long term. They're guys to help the team make the postseason this year and give playoff experience to some of the younger talents on the squad so that Raymond, Sider, Edvinson even, because he's been really good ever since returning to the lineup and getting called up. I'm going to call this here Simon Edvinson. It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't play another game in Grand Rapids ever. He's good. He is solid enough to stick around here. All these younger guys getting some flavor of playoff experience this year, that's a part of the Iser plan. Just gotta make it and see what happens. They don't even need to win a round. Just making the dance and knowing what that's like, that experience is what's important here. And the Red Wings are fighting tooth and nail, especially with the return of their captain, to make sure that that goes down. Let's go over to the moneypuck.com standings because if you take a look at the current playoff odds. I will say it's not looking great, but a lot of that has to do with the way that Money Puck calculates their odds in the first place. Right now, you've got the Philadelphia Flyers at a 90% chance of making the playoffs, the Red Wings are at 40.4, the Capitals are at a 38.2, and the Devils are at a 14.5. Tampa Bay, who is in the first wildcard spot, they have a 99.7% chance, so they're probably going to make it. But when it comes to the rest of these teams here, the Wings being at 40.4%, honestly, I think that's pretty generous because the way the Money Puck model evaluates their playoff odds is based off of the performance of these teams in the prior few games. Not just like, oh, their overall record and the points percentage and stuff. It's like, how well are the Red Wings playing in the past week or so of hockey? And when you take a look at their data, what they're doing in terms of expected goals, expected percentages, etc., etc., how well do they project to being able to make the playoffs with the remaining games in their schedule? It's not really great. It's under 50%. I get it. But the Wings are still in the postseason spot, and they still have themselves the opportunity here. Now, if you round out the rest of the games, let's go over to the next week or so of Red Wings hockey. The Red Wings play the Nashville Predators on Saturday. That's going to be a tough game. The Preds have been so good the past two weeks or so. They've just been winning games and winning games and winning games. And when they're losing, they're losing in overtime. They've gotten a point in, what, 16 straight games is a franchise record? Crazy. On Tuesday, March 26th, this is arguably going to be the next most important game of the Red Wings season. It is a 1v1 against the Capitals. Give Ovechkin his hat trick, but smoke the rest of the Caps out and get five, six goals yourselves because we know the Wings are capable of scoring goals in bunches this year, especially against teams that don't really seem like they're in it to win it at all. Like the Caps, sure, they get the OV goals and then they peace out. They don't really care, it seems like, about the rest of everything that's going on. The Wings then go through a very tough stretch. They've got the Hurricanes, they've got the Panthers, the Lightning, and the Rangers, all teams that could very well give the Wings a tough matchup in the first round of the playoffs if the wildcard race is able to round itself out like that. I mean, look, Carolina's got 94 points. They're tied with Florida right now. So a bunch of these teams, pretty much except for Tampa, they could all be first-round opponents for Detroit if they stick around in that final wildcard spot. So... Tough games for sure, but then afterwards you've got even more games against teams that should be beatable. You've got the Sabres, the Caps, the Penguins. We'll skip over the Maple Leafs because they're pretty good. And then the Canadians twice. So all in all, a decent mix of good teams and bad teams. But ultimately, if there's a time for the Wings to light a fire under their behinds from now on till the end of the year, yeah, Dylan Larkin's back. You've got to get these wins. Now is that time. Detroit Red Wings hockey. This is it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how the Wings have been playing ever since the Larkin return. What are your thoughts about where they're going to go from here? And big questions. This is our pre let's say pre-playoff predictions. We've got about four weeks-ish till the start of the playoffs. Do the Wings make it? Do they play in the Stanley Cup playoffs and who will their opponent be? Based off of how everything is going off right now, which one of the teams will be the first seeded team in the East to take on Detroit as the last wild card? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99. And bye.